and I'm not going to go through these, but maybe we'll talk about them in a couple example cases. So first, if you have, if you t if you consider the strategy that Shai and I used, so that strategy was to use the first card to designate the suit, and then use the remaining cards to designate how much to this card you were supposed to add to get the hidden card. So these are permuted to, to tell us how much to add to this card. Um, the question is, what size deck could this possibly work for? And for the case when we choose five cards, the case that this does work for, or that this strategy is suited for, is for a 52 card deck. So if our, if our, let's see, let's let n be the number of cards we're choosing. And let d be the size of the deck. Okay, so if, if n is 5, then the number of suits we can have is 4 suits, because we need to apply the pigeonhole, the pigeonhole principle to allow, um, to allow the pigeonhole principle to work so that we get 2 cards of the same suit. So we can have 4 suits. And then the remaining 3 cards, so Um, I guess this is in general n minus 2 cards. So the remaining 3 cards can be permuted. There's 3 factorial permutations of that. So um, but we had a choice as to which card we chose from the the given suit, and so the actual total number of cards that we can have in the deck is six plus well two times six plus one. So the total number in the suit is two times six plus one, which is thirteen, and so the total number of cards in the deck for which this strategy works is 4 times 13, which is 52. So I guess what the one question is asking you to do is to make a similar argument for supposing you, cho you chose, well, n cards. What size deck could you possibly get? Does this make sense so far? OK. So the next question that is on the problem set asks you about um, how to, you know, what, what's the maximal total size deck that this could potentially work for? I mean, it may, may or may not work. And you have to figure out um, how big that deck could be. And I'll leave that for you because it's sort of a fun counting exercise. But what I really want to talk about today is well, what's, you know, I mean, what's, if, if we know, if we have some deck size that's not bigger than the max, than the upper bound, how, is it possible to find a strategy or, you know, how many strategies are there, so on and so forth. So given a deck of size D, which is less than or equal to the lower bound, or the upper bound, rather. Is there a strategy that works? And I guess in theory, I mean, you could just ask your computer, you know, check all the strategies. Is that going to be very efficient? How many strategies are there? So, um,
so how many strategies are there? Well, we have a deck of size D, and we're choosing N cards out of it. Um, so they're, they're D choose N. Um, possibilities we have to that we have to account for. Think of these as n choose d digits, if you will, n choose d possible answers that we have to find. And how many when we have when we have a particular subset of size n, how many possibility, how many possible things could we choose? to show. So if we have given a subset, right, so given a subset of size n, how many n minus 1 cards can we show? So we have to choose the n minus 1 cards, and then there's n minus 1 permutations. So it's n choose n minus 1 times, well, times n minus 1 factorial. That's the number of permutations of n minus 1 cards. Shy is now hidden in the audience. This works out to be n factorial. I'm impressed with how the blackboard has really gotten worked in over the last couple months. Has gotten what? Like you can really see the chalk on the blackboard. The first couple of weeks of this trouble. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's better, isn't it better? The blackboard's working better. What was your question? <laughs> it still isn't. Oh, yeah. Well, that's because there's a secret passage behind it. <laughs> <laughs> At least in the bathroom. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that explains something. <laughs> Okay, so so given an, given a, a subset of n cards, there's n factorial possible things that we can show to the magician, and so how many possible right. strategies? And your phony proof was that you left out the n choose n minus one when you first explained this right problem, right? And then you said, oh, there's only 24 different ways, so it's impossible. And remember? Right. <laughs> Tara made a phony proof at the beginning that you couldn't do this puzzle because when you when she gives me the four ordered cards, she can only give me 24 pieces of information, and that's not enough to get the other 48 cards that are missing. And that's because she left out the n choose n minus 1, that, that she had a choice to make take those four cards out of five. Mm -hmm. So it's really 120 different things that she could have told her. <coughs> so in theory, we could do that trick with 120 card deck, 124 card deck. Four card deck. That's the math. But, yeah. Um, Okay, so so if we have these for each for each possibility, we have n factorial choices. That means that the total number of strategies, and probably a lot of these are going to be awful and just not work. Well, is that in each position, in each of the d choose n possibilities, we have n factorial possibilities. So it's n factorial times n factorial times n factorial d choose n times. Does that make sense? Does everyone believe me? So that's really big. I wouldn't want to make my computer run an algorithm for n very much bigger than 4. I guess, not with not what? Not what even. It, yeah. I mean, I guess. Cards and, and a deck of eight. Okay. So if we do, if we're, I don't want to erase any of this. Yeah, so um, if D is equal to eight cards and we're choosing three, then n factorial to the eight choose three. Well, three factorial, six to the eight choose three. Is what? Three. 
So even checking all the possible strategies for choosing three cards from an eight card deck is not very efficient. And so in particular, I mean, you really wouldn't want to choose, check all the strategies for choosing five cards out of a 120 card, 124 card deck. I mean, that just seems like not the best way of going about this problem. Um, anyone have a calculator? What's 60 to 56 say divided by a billion? Let's say you could do a billion of these in a second. God, all these Palm Pilots. Can we do that? Does anybody have something we can calculate there? This is 7 to 34. 7 to 34. So take out a billion, take out how many zeros, nine zeros. You take out nine zeros, you get... No, I already divided the billion. This is already divided by a billion? Divided by a billion? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I got. So, no, to the 25th. 10 to the 25th. 25th. Okay, so, okay, 25th. so. How, many, how many years is 3.7 times 10 to the 25th seconds? I can do that too. <laughs> 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 right, right. 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 Is it centuries? Centuries. Seconds to years. Oh, cool. Three years. 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 But this is really important. I mean, I want you guys to realize just how ridiculously intractable this problem is. If we, that's if a computer can do a billion of these in a second. So, okay, so just wait a couple of years because everybody knows they're getting faster, right? So let's make them a billion times faster, and then we get it down to ten to the nine years. Ten to the ninth year. A billion years. Right. That's <laughs> 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 Can we analyze it in terms of growth rate of, of speed, like using Moore's law or whatever, and see how long it would take? Uh, see how many centuries it would take until computers were fast enough for us to actually. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's imagine this. Let's say you could do an operation in the time it took light to move a micron. I mean, I, 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 I think that idea of how fast computers is going to improve has some limits as well, right? I mean, it, it works for the next 30 years, but... Yeah, that's what they said years But if you, if you say that, okay, perhaps the, the speed has an absolute limit, maybe there isn't much of a limit to the number of computers you could have working in parallel, the, the rate at which you could produce the actual... Okay, so let's say we'll have a computer on every atom in the universe. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Every atom in the universe will have a computer, and they'll all work simultaneously. It, it would be hard to parallelize this computation, of course, we realize, right? Because this computation has, has to, to look at everything that was done before. So, so the issue of parallelizing it is just completely hard. But let's just assume by some miracle we could parallelize it perfectly, and every atom had a computer... How many atoms are there in the universe? Does anybody have a ballpark? Ten to the what? But how? If every atom has a computer, then what about the computers that are on atoms? Do they the atoms that are in computers? Do they also have computers? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. So every molecule has got a computer. Big number. <laughs> right. That's what the universe is. Just finding a strategy for three cards out of eight. <laughs> when the universe ends, there's going to be one big explosion and the two of spades will show up. <laughs> <laughs> That's your part, everything else is a detail, right? Um, okay, so. Whatever, I don't know anything else to say today. I mean, I'm done. <laughs> so, so, let's try and find a strategy for, for seven choose three. Let's just sort of see if we can plow ahead and get stuck or not get stuck or what. Um, and your strategy won't work for this, right? My strategy, yeah, my strategy. So, so here we have seven cards in our deck. Should we try to see where your strategy would mess up? Like what it would so let's suppose that we have seven cards. Well, that's the question. First, we have to figure out how many suits we want to divide them into. 
Okay, so we have a seven card deck. We want to choose three cards. You get to answer your own question. If you're choosing three cards, how many suits can you have to guarantee that you're going to have two of those cards in the same suit? Two. Okay, so there's two suits. I don't know, let's call the low suit and the high suit. One, two, three, and four, five, six, seven, or one, two, three, four. Okay. So now we guarantee that we get two cards in the same suit. Um, I guess the problem is, so first we want to put the suit here. We have one card hidden. And we have one more card that can tell us how high to go. And so that's not going to work. I mean, there's just no way if we get, well, so, um, so the point is, if we have, suppose we have one and, one and three and four and seven, or one and three and seven that we chose. Oops, no, I guess it works for that. It works for, so suppose we have, suppose we have four and six and two that we chose. Okay, so four and six are both in the high suit. But, well, so suppose I want to show four and hide six. Well, showing the two here is going to say one, so that's supposed to signify that five is hidden, not that six is hidden. And similarly, if we put the six here, the six would signify that, or the two would signify that seven was hidden, not that six was hidden. Right, so in particular, your strategy for four, six, two, and for four, five, six will be the same, right? Right. right. Let's write those out, because I want people to realize what makes a strategy bad. Oh, right. Right, so, so here if we had 4, 6, 2, 4, 6, and 2, 4, 5, both of these, the, 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 in both of these cases we would have to put the 4 here and show the 2. So if but, I'm doing this trick with tower and I see 4, 2, mm -hmm. I don't have any clue whether it's a 6 or a 5. Right, so, so we can't. The strategies are bad. So yeah, so a strategy is bad if we have for for two for two distinct um, sets of three we have the same set of two that we're showing. So strategy is bad if for two subsets of n, you generate the same, for two distinct subsets of n, you generate the same n minus 1 subset. And so if you're going through your dictionary to figure out which card is hidden, you can't figure it out because there's two possibilities. And for the case of three cards chosen, once you're nine or higher in the deck, any strategy will be bad. Right? Once you have, if you're choosing three cards and you have a deck of oh, four, yeah. then any strategy you choose by definition will be bad because you just don't have enough of these ordered two pairs to go around. That's how you get the upper bound to begin with. Right, so maybe we should write that down. So, suppose n is three. And we want to figure out how big of a deck can we, how big of a deck will not admit a strategy. So if we have nine cards, if the deck is size nine, so this is what Shai claims, 
If we have a deck of size 9, then we can't possibly make any strategy work. So if we have a deck of size 9, there's 9 choose 3 um, possible 3 subsets. So 9 choose 3 possible things that we could be thrown. What's 9 choose 3? Uh, 9 times 8 times... Ugh. 84. 84, good. And there's the possible things that we can encode. That's the possible um, ordered pairs of cards from a nine element set. So that's nine times eight. So this is possible three card subsets and nine times eight, which is 72, is the possible number of ordered pairs. So but now by the pigeonhole principle, at least two of these are going to show up for the same guy over here, which means that it's a bad strategy, or that any strategy would be a bad strategy. So, Does that make sense? You can make a similar, a similar argument for, I mean, this, this is sort of how you can find your upper bound for any size n for, for your deck size. So you have to figure out for which size of the deck is, is the number of n card subsets bigger than the number of n minus 1 ordered subsets. Okay, so 9 is too big. A deck of 9 is too big. But a deck of 7, I claim, isn't too big. If we compare 7 choose 3 to 7 times 6, well, 7 choose 3 is bigger than 7 times 6. So, whoops, no, the other way around. 7 times 6 is bigger than 7 choose 3. So, 7 cards work. So let's, and we, we know that our original strategy didn't work for 7 cards, so let's just sort of brute force try and write down a strategy that we think is going to work. So, what I have to do is for each, I've carefully beforehand written down all my three card subsets. So now we have to figure out which two card, which ordered pair we're going to associate to the hidden third card for each three card subset. We just, I mean, essentially what we have to do is write down a dictionary that, you know, the, I get handed a three card subset, I show, I, I look it up in my dictionary and then I put two of them down and then Shai picks up his dictionary and he goes through and looks at the two cards and finds the, the third hidden card. So, so it's a 1-1 one, one function. Right, so it has to be a 1-1 one, one function. But it doesn't have to be odd to, because there might be, out of these 42, you're only going to use 35 of them. So there's right. seven of these pairs that don't get used, which gives us a lot of flexibility here. <coughs> it might be odd to. Yeah, it might be on two. Not in this case, but I mean, with eight, yeah. it might be right. on two. Yeah, with 124 choose five, it's got to be on two. Right. Yeah. And in fact, a strategy is bad whenever it's not one, one. Right. Whenever there's two ways to go backwards, because then I get my ordered collection, and I don't know which way to go back. Right. So... Okay, so who wants to be the spokesperson for the class? <laughs> what should we use for the strategy for one, two, three? Which I did, card? I did it just by choosing the first thing that comes to mind, one, two. Okay. And then looking for a place to put two, one in. Okay. That, didn't, that, just following that algorithm. Mm -hmm. um, that means that you hide three and you show one, you and, show two. one and two. And now if you put two, one in the next place, it fits. <laughs> okay, so now, now we can't use one, two, or two, one here. So let's try two, five, and we hide one. Okay, so now you would go ahead and find the next possible place that you could fit five, two. Yeah. That, oh, that, gee. That works for me. Huh. Huh. So like the two, three, so five. So here. Would be five, two. Right. Wow. So Chris's Chris's method was to now go up to. 2, 3, 5, and put the 5, 2 here, because that's the next possible spot that we could fit 
that we could choose a 5 and a 2 out. Um, so here we'd put 5, 2, and hide the 3. Um, great, so 1, 2, 6, I guess you would do... I would have gone 1, 5, and then 1, 6, but... Oh, that, you... Work, oh, I see. But. I see, so it seems like there's a lot of leeway here. I mean, let's just sort of go blindly through. Um, so let's say 2, 6 means 1, 2, 7 means 1. Okay, so we're okay now. Um, here with two, three, four, let's see. So we've already done three, four is taken. Three, four is taken. Uh, two, three is not taken. Use four, three. Oh, okay. So let's use four, three. Okay, so for two, three, six, let's see. Two, three is not taken. So let's use that. Now for 2, 3, 7, 2, 3 is taken. 3, 2 is not taken, so let's use that. Okay, so for 2, 4, 5, 2, 4 is taken. No, it's not. Good, let's use 2, 4. For 2, 4, 6, um, 4, 2 is not taken. Let's use 4, 2. Okay, so now for 2, 4, 7, let's see, 2, 4 is taken and 4, 2 is taken. 2, 7 is taken, but 4, 7, and 4, 7 is taken, but 2, 2, 7 is taken, but 7, 2 is not taken, and neither is 7, 4. So let's use 7, 2. Uh, okay, so now for 2, 5, 6, let's see, 2, 5 and 2, 6 are both taken. Um, 5, 6 is taken. 5, 2 is not taken. 5, 2 is taken? Oh, geez. 5, 2 is taken. Okay, so 6, 5 is not taken. <laughs> okay, so 2, 5, 7. Let's see. 2, 5 is taken. 2, 7 is taken. Uh, 5, 7 is taken. 5, 7 is taken. 2, 7, 5 is not taken. Now finally for 267, let's see, 2627 and 6776, is that taken? No. no. Okay, so now we go to our third row. 345, let's see. 3435 three, are taken. 45 is taken. 54, is that taken? No. No. I'm going to be really shocked if this works. <laughs> um, three, four, six. So let's see. Three, four is taken. Three, six is taken. Four, six is taken. Six, four is taken? No. Three, four, seven. Seven, three. Seven, three is not taken. Three five six. Um, three five and three six are taken. Five six is taken. Six three, six, three. six three is not taken. Good. Three five and seven. Let's see. Five three is not taken. Seven three is all right. Seven three is all right. Seven three is taken. Five three five three is okay. No. 5 3 is not okay? Where's 5 3? 5 3 is not there. Okay, now 3 6 7. Let's see. 6 3 is taken. Uh, 7 3 is taken. How about 7 6? That's taken too. And so are 3 6 and 3 7 6 7. So now we're stuck. So we'd have to go back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what we could do. We could go through and continue. I mean, we only, we're only four away. Let's sort of forget this one for right now. 
Yeah, but you changed these six ounces to one six. Oh, one six wasn't taken. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I put one six. Let me stop for a second before you go on. So Gadora's idea is fine because she's a human being and she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, the problem is the problem is you can't tell your computer to well if it screws up, then just go back and find. I mean, you could, but you'd have to really program carefully. I mean, right. You'd have, to, you'd have to write a good program that knows what the best one is to kind of switch instead of just kind of looking at it intuitively and saying, oh, well, I can see that would be three and it would help me here. And if you're going to have your co computer just go back to the last case and try the next possibility instead of the one and just backtrack, the worst case that happens, let's say none of these strategies work. Let's say we're actually really dead here. Then the worst thing that happens is you run through every single strategy in your backtracking and you finally report none of them work. And if you do that for this 3-7 case, even this is centuries, right, if we try every strategy here. So, so we have to hope to get lucky in doing this the brute force way. And we have to hope that we don't have to backtrack hardly at all. And if we do, it's just very briefly. And there's a million different ways to write your program because none of them really work. Right? <laughs> I mean, then you're just hoping Sorry. for a lucky break here. So, so this is really an engineering kind of, kind of uh, experiment rather than an algorithm to solve this thing. I mean, I guess the answer is, is that at least I don't know and Shai doesn't know for what <laughs> values there are solutions. I mean, so this is really... So I'm open-ended question. It's hard. Well, maybe it's not hard, but it seems hard to us. Um, pardon? If you enumerate starting with the pairs, you say, okay, I can have a pair of one, two. What does that go to? Mm -hmm. I have two, one. You mean to go the other direction? Yeah. Right, to, go the, to make your dictionary the other direction. That might be easier. Yeah, so Heather's suggesting, why don't you start with the pairs and, and generate it's your triples that way? Function anyway, right. right. The foreground background doesn't matter. Right. right. That's a good idea. Exactly. Um, well, can we, let's try to finish this. Yeah, so let's try and finish this. Okay, so we, we took away 6 sevenths. So now we can put 6 7 here. Okay, so 4 5 6. Let's see. You can do the same thing with 1 4 6. Yeah, yeah okay. <coughs> so now I want to put 4 6 here. Okay, four, five, seven. Are any of those not taken? Probably not. Okay, so seven four still open. We can use it on the next one, so you're gonna have to. Okay, so so let's see. Let's change this to one five, meaning seven, and then we can still use five seven. Yep. Now finally for five six seven. Let's see. We should be able to change it with one five six. Oops. To use one six, I guess. We've used one six. Six one. Oh, six one. Right. And now we can use five six here. Okay, so great. There's a strategy for this <laughs> that works. Yeah, right. So Memorize this. <laughs> um, the question is, is there, well, my question is, Shai's question is, you know, how often can you find a strategy? Is it possible to find a strategy that works? Is it possible to find a nice way of enumerating a strategy? Um, my question is, how many <laughs> strategies are there? I mean, what's the probability that we just brute force hit upon a strategy when we just go through. You know, I mean, the total number of strategies is this. How many of them are good? So right. I guess Especially, you could figure that out. I mean, that's harder. Question, when I assigned you to go ahead and run a program that could conceivably run for, you know, 40,000 centuries, <laughs> I don't expect you to run the program and wait. What I'm hoping <laughs> is that, that when you have 52 cards and you're trying to, say, get it to work for 60, you know, instead of 52, that so many of the strategies that you pick will work that if you just go ahead and enumerate them in any kind of an order, you're going to get really lucky and not have to look through even the teeniest fraction of this huge intractable universe. Just because what Tara said, if you just pick one at random, you'd probably get lucky. Like, it'd be interesting to just pick a strategy completely at random 
and do it a million times and calculate what's the chance of you getting one, and probably the chance of you getting one is pretty good. So just pick one at random and try it, um, which is basically what I want you to try to do. So, so hopefully we can get some answers and see how high we can go. So you want to talk about Sham's wife's? Yeah, so... so what's your wife's name, Sham? We have to give it to Rajni. Rajni? Rajni? Rajni. Okay, so so Sham's wife Rajni came up with a <laughs> <laughs> right. It's it's really nice. So she has a nice strategy, which is essentially it says. So her strategy is for each if you're given. If you're given this set of three that you want to code, that you want to encode, first write down all the, the permutations um, in re reverse lexicographic order. So that means, well, fortunately I have letters. Um, that means, OK, first we write down CBA, then CAB, then let's see, BCA, BAC, then ACB. A, B, C. So this is sort of the reverse dictionary order. So reverse, so lexicographic is a multi-syllabic version of alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the alphabet for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, OK, so first write down all the n factorial permutations of your your guy and then try to encode using this right yeah. so try to hide the so go through go through through your permutations in this order and try to hide the first one and show the second two and see if that works see if that's already been hit by your see if the if the second two has already been shown by your strategy before or not and if it does if it has been then move on to the next one and try and use ab to encode c and then try and use CA to encode B, and so forth. I'm so confused though. The, the first one, the CBA, that is clearly reverse lexicographic mm -hmm. order. But the CAB, how? Um, so what I've done is I've written down I've written down the six permutations in reverse dictionary order. And well, so the, the first one, I, I see what you're talking about. But how do, how are you saying that CAB is reverse dictionary order? They're not internally reverse order. The if I have six words, namely CBA, CAB, BCA, BAC, ACB, and ABC, and in the dictionary they would occur in the order ABC, ACB, BAC, BCA, CAB, CBA. Okay. And so then I turn that upside down. Not the letters with right. The words. Okay. Okay. Kabaz. Yeah. So Kabaz first. Kabaz first. <laughs> So, so Rajni, is that right? Rajni? Raj, Rajni, yeah. So, that, so, so, her, so, so the Rajni conjecture is that if you do this, you always get one that works before you get to the end of your list of six. In other words, you never have to backtrack with this idea. And maybe we should do it on this list of seven to see how it comes up with. But, but Shama, Shama's tried her suggestion, and so far you've never had to backtrack, right? If there was one, you found it. Um, is that true? Yeah. And I've gone up to the deck of 27, choose four, which is the highest for... For four cards. For four cards, and it's worked up to then. Right. So, so, so this found a strategy without backtracking for the maximum you could hope for for choosing four cards. And now... So now the question is, what happens for five cards? Can five? I mean, can it... Or can with six, or with N. Yeah. Right. Like, what if we could prove that her way of generating always got a strategy that worked without backtracking? If we could prove that, then it would be a real algorithm. It wouldn't just be lucky. It would be a constructive kind of an algorithm. And we know that you could always get the maximum value, our upper bound. And this problem would be solved, and nobody would ever look at it again. But I think that, that that's really kind of a lot to hope for to prove that. I think we're just kind of lucky so far. And it'd be neat to see why it's really working. But nobody knows. So look at it. Try to see why it's working. So, so let's, we yeah, so let's. Seven, let's do the first half of the and see that we don't get a back to that. So we would, be the, we would be coding the first letter of the tree each time. Yeah, this one means A, B, encoding C, 
This one means CA encoding B. This one means AC encoding B. This means CB encoding A and BC encoding A. Why is it in reverse alphabetical order? Why not alphabetical order? So the reason Sham's wife, the reason Rajni, I think, chose reverse lexicographic order is we that this. Because we can't ask her right. I mean, Thank she's you. not here. Well, if she, if this distance learning were working, maybe we could <laughs> dial her up and ask her. I mean, a hologram. Right. <laughs> The idea is, is that here in this first column, we really want to use a lot of the ones. I mean, earlier when we, well, of course, in the strategy I just erased, we had to backtrack. And we, we tried to use a lot of the things that had one. Like we would use a one. We, we wanted ones to occur a lot here, because there's no ones over here. And so we want to use up the pairs that have ones in the first column. And so this sort of maximizes that. This uses the a, b's, and the a's a lot first. And so. You know, the using the reverse lexicographic order has something to do with the fact that we've written down our numbers here in lexicographic order. But I mean, if you do it the opposite way, you use up all the C's first. Right, but there's a lot more C's over here. Well, there's a lot more five, six, sevens over here, and a lot more ones over here. So really, we'd like to use the fact that there's ones over here, rather than just sort of go, go blindly along. Well, I'm saying just do it alphabetical order. Sure, you could do that and then start at the end, and that would work just as well. Okay. <laughs> if both of them are in lexicographic order, what we found was uh, we have a most inefficient strategy. Right. right that's about the worst thing. Right. 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 Because very quickly, you, you end up hiding uh, combinations of two threes and two fives. The minute you hide three sets of them, then you automatically guarantee that there's two ways to go back to a one. Maybe they're yeah, so, so the problem is, is if we, if we put both of these in lexicographic order, in alphabetical order, then what's going to happen is we're going to hide one an awful lot over here, and we're going to show an awful lot of two threes, two fours, four twos, four fives, and then when we get over here to something that has a two, four, and five in it, we're going to have already used up all the possibilities. And so we would have to backtrack. So it just turns out, you know, no one's proved anything yet. We haven't proven that this is the most efficient way to do it, but in the examples that Sham has seen, this seems to be the nice way to do it. So it works for all uh, three card hands and four card hands. All the way <coughs> wow. Could we prove that there's only one strategy that works for three Not cards one. out of eight and, since this, and show that this is fine? Well, that would be nice, yeah, okay. if we could do that. So Todd suggested, why don't we just prove that there's only one possible strategy for, for the maximal size deck? And if we could do that, and Strom's and, and Shom's strategy works, then we'd have a nice theorem, a nicer, an even nicer theorem. Um, yeah, but I don't think we're any closer to proving that than we are in proving anything. Okay. So if we start with one, two, three, the 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 first thing is going to be CBA. Well, and that works because we haven't run out of anything yet. So we encode uh, 2, 1, encodes 3. Does everyone see how I got that? So now I come to a 4, 2, 1, and I want that's, well, 4, 2, 1 is the first thing, but I've already used 2, 1. So I next come to 4, 1, 2. So I use 1, 2 to encode 4. So you should realize it's not that you get it on the very first shot. Sometimes you have to go to the second, the third, sometimes you'll even go down to the sixth one before you succeed. But you never go through all six possible pairs. And run out. And run out, at least that's what the conjecture says. The conjecture doesn't say you get it on your very first shot. It says that you'll get it on one of your first six tries for each one of these triples. And then if you fail, there's no way to do it at all without having to backtrack and try some other one that you didn't try last time. It really knocks the right, so possibilities down. What does it knock it down to? It yeah, so, so if we use this strategy, um, so. N factorial, the thing you just erased, the N factorial to the D to the Z. That's the old upper one. OK, so that's the total number of strategies, N factorial to the D to the Z. Um, if we look at the total number of strategies there are using this algorithm, well, at each of the n choose. The n times n factorial. 
You have the n choose, choose n. at each of the d choose n, you n guys, factorial. you have n factorial yeah. things to look at. No, no, you don't backtrack. Yeah, it's d choose n times n factorial. EJ doesn't look convinced. Okay. <laughs> so is anyone else not convinced? He's not convinced. <laughs> so, so what number would it, this give us for the, the one that we compu computed earlier with the total strategy? It would be 6 like times 56 rather than 6 to the 56. Yeah. Right. What number would this give us? Well, the calculator so we could just compare it. <laughs> That's like Carl Sagan. Um, as many stars as there are in the. <laughs> Let's even say yeah. 2,000. Let's say it's 10,000. Right. 6 times 56, 300 plus 36. But you should realize that that, I mean, that gets us out of, you know, the crazy universe into something reasonable for this space of three and, and a deck of seven. But you very quickly go back into the twilight zone the minute n gets up to... Right. I mean, the minute n gets up to five or six. I mean, the point is, is we still have an n factorial there, right? I mean, checking all these strategies is still not the smartest way to go. Because checking, I mean... N factorial, we know that's n to the n, and this is d choose n times n factorial. And so this, I mean, this still is not going to be, checking all these slick strategies is still not going to be an efficient way to solve this problem. Um, it may be the best way that we know of right now, but it's not efficient. Um, so. But it's, it's just 200 million. <laughs> it's the work of mere moments. Right. <laughs> Right, but I mean, still, if you if you right, right. I guess what is this for? 124 and five. What's 124 choose five times five factorial? Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have a computer or a calculator, rather? What do you want to know? 124 times 123 times 122 times 121. Uh, no, that cancels out this, right? Uh, yeah, because that's just the permutations of the of Right, right. Oh, uh, do I have to multiply by 100? Times 120. Wait, whoa, 2701800? This is the number of uh, things we have to check for 124 cards, choose five. So the number of slick strategies is a lot. Uh, yeah, 27 trillion. That's not so bad. 27. Yeah, 27 trillion. No, billion. Billion, 27 billion. That's not so bad. That's 27 seconds, according to Shai's. <laughs> 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 so, okay. Anyway, let's uh, finish filling this out. So we can't choose 2, 1, or 1, 2 here. So we choose uh, 2, 5? No. No, I think 5, 1. 5, 1. And here, I guess we choose 6, 1. Oops, oh yeah, I forgot the one three. Right. So, in any event, you could do this. I mean, you could sit here and do this if you were not as tired as I am, maybe. Um, 
Yeah. Are there any questions about how the strategy works? Or how, I mean, what the strategy is? I mean, why does it work? If you can answer why it works, then great. You know, you can prove our conjecture, maybe. Uh, that's the only strategy. Does anyone else have a strategy? Yeah, the strategy. Oh, yeah. Does your strategy backtrack? Uh, my, not in the ways that I've tried it so far. Uh, okay, so, so, so I haven't tried it as extensively as shown. So your strategy was actually not to go in reverse order. You actually go in forward order. But any time you get one, you look for a place where the, where the flip can be used. To generalize my algorithm, it would be to list all of the ordered pairs and drop the ordered pairs in the first place they fit. Right. That's what you were thinking. And that's, that's more or less what Heather was thinking, right. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, list the ordered pairs and right. in the first place where they belong. Right. And then, and then if it's already filled, go to the next possible place. Right. Yeah. And if that never gets up to a situation where you can't put one in and you have to pick them all up and start again, then you get the same result as Sean. Right. You'll always find right. it. So that actually, that seems like a good strategy, too. So our second strategy is look at all the ordered pairs. Hey, does it come up with the same thing? I don't know. I was just going to write that down and figure it out. What if they're the same? Once again, Slick what? <laughs> Slick strategy, two is to list all ordered pairs. And I guess we list them in lexicographic order. Right, the first two would start backwards. They're not going to be the same strategy. Oh, well, well if that, so, so here's something else. So if, if it actually does work, if you don't get a backtrack, then we know there's not a unique strategy. Right. So one way or the other, you win. That's the best kind of math, right? You can't do injections. Right. Right. Yeah, so they're definitely not going to be the same strategies because these strategies, I guess we list all the ordered pairs in lexicographic order, right? We list 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1. What? Oh, you list them that way. You don't even do this 1, 2, 1, 3. Oh, yeah. But when you do 1, 2, do you also throw 2, 1 in also? I thought that was the implication. Of well, that I, that's how I did it when I did it by hand, and I think that that is analogous to doing it this way. I'd have to think about it some more to make sure that that's the case. Yeah, I'm not sure that it is. If you do it this way, I don't think it's going to be the same, because if, if you do 1, 2, and 1, 3, and, well, maybe it is. I don't know. I have to think about it. So here we get 1, 2. Here we get 1, 3, 1, 4. Uh, we still get to stick a 1-7 in anyway. What? Oh. So we can stick a 1-7 in. Uh, even in a case where there's 8, even when it's exactly enough information here. I'm not sure you can just Yeah, I don't know. This doesn't. It's already generating different answers. Yeah, I mean, this is very different from Shams. So. Well, the way, but, way I'm doing it, mm -hmm. it's just switch the two digits. Oh, the. Yeah. Okay, That's what I'm so, but maybe that gives us two different strategies. In oh, fact, in fact, if you if you if you have a strategy, then you can reverse all your pairs, and you'll still have another strategy, right? right? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Fine. So, so there's at least two yeah, strategies. Least two. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, all right. So we want to so, call those in the same equivalence. Right. 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 Exactly. So yeah, if we have an equivalence That's relation, equivalence an equivalence right. relation in this case would be. Flip all pairs. Right. The minute you have two things that are that, that you start feeling are the same, then you just want oh. to think of them as unique. So you call them all the same equivalency class. In fact, any um, so if you if you have a strategy for n cards out of a d card deck, then you're going to have another equivalence relation, namely permute use the same permutation to permute your strategy all the way along, and that's going to give you a new strategy. And so we have an equivalence class. Again, we have an equivalence relation where two strategies are equivalent if you can permute all the, use the same permutation to permute all the answers, all the dictionary entries or whatever you want to call them. So, um, you look confused. Should I say that again? So, if we, well, so one thing we've just noticed is that switching 
all uh, pairs um, gives a new strategy. And we want these to be the same. Yeah, that's right. So in general, if we have so if we have this as our thing that we want to encode, and so what we do is we say A B C D E and we encode this to be F. So we have now we're choosing one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Um if we choose a permutation of five cards, so fix one permutation, then if we apply that permutation, so if, say our permutation is switch the first two, then if we switch the first two of each of our five card entries in our dictionary, then that's going to be a different strategy. It's going to be somehow we want to call that equivalent to the first one. And so applying this to each uh, five card subset gives a new strategy. And again, these should be equivalent. So any size deck choose six cards. Yeah. In general, it will be if we choose n cards, fix a permutation of n minus 1 cards, blah, 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 blah. Um, this will give a new permutation of each, and or this will give a new strategy, and we should call these equivalent. So in this case, we'll get equivalence classes of strategies the equivalence classes will be the n minus 1 factorial permutations applied to some given strategy. We can probably, well, we'd have to somehow choose one of them to be the least, but we don't even want to think about that. OK. So maybe, maybe there is one equivalence class of strategies. Maybe there's who knows how many. Um, of successful strategies. Right, of successful strategies. Yeah. And maybe it depends on how big the deck is. Right. Maybe when it's the maximum size, you, you have one equivalence class. Right. I mean, I guess the hope is, is that when you have the maximal size deck, there's one, one, equivalence. one equivalence class of good strategies. But that's even not clear to me. I sort of suspect that they're... You would expect there to be more than one equivalence class when you don't have a maximum. Right. There's just too much flexibility. I think my gut instinct is that when you have the maximal size set, there should just be one equivalence class of strategies. That would make it a nice problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that would make it a nice paper, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, right. So. This idea of doing it in this backwards way, is, it just feels like just the right interleave, right? Yeah, yeah. So this is nice. Um, the the moral <coughs> of today's recitation, <laughs> I guess, is that this is hard. I mean, this is sort of unknown. Like, we don't know what the answer is. Um, and so, the, you know, this is what math is sort of about. This is what research in any field is sort of about. You have some question, you don't know the answer, and you just plug away, and you program your computer to test a few cases, and, and you say, oh, look, this strategy seems to work. Now let's prove it. And, of course, then you have no idea where you're, how you're supposed to prove it. Um, but... That's the moral of the story. <laughs> so, are there any questions? Any answers? <laughs> I guess we can stop.